How is the presence of the Lord wonderful? It is so sweet, and it is so precious. And to think that, you know, we have access to that presence of the Lord every moment of every day in our lives, and I hope that you chase after that, not just here in worship or Sundays, but Oh man, we need it all week long, don't we? <laughs> we need it all week long. All right, well, I'm really excited to bring the message this morning. Uh, this morning. Oh. <laughs> I did take a nap, confession. Okay. <laughs> I am really looking forward to bringing the message this evening. Um, God has really been working this on my heart. Um, and, you know, we're going to learn a bit about this fight that we're in, okay? Um, and I'm going to go through a lot of scripture, so if you like scripture, I'm not going to go to each one, but please feel free to jot it down so you can refer back to it later. Um, but the first thing I want to talk about is what is this battle? Ephesians 6, 12 says, we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. So what, what the Bible is trying to tell us is that there is a real battle going on. But this battle is in the spiritual realm. We can't see it, but it is absolutely happening, and it is absolutely affecting us every day of our lives. So that's the first thing we need to know. Uh, first of all, if this is news to you, I want you to know you're in a battle, okay? <laughs> you are. You're absolutely in a battle. And the sooner you realize that, the better off you're going to be in your life. Now, whenever you fight a battle, the first thing we need to know is about our enemy. Our enemy is not our husband. Uh, <laughs> you're like, oh, it's not our wives. Our enemy is not this government. It's not the Republicans. It's not the Democrats. The enemy in this life is Satan. He is our enemy. Now, we don't really know a lot about Satan's origins. We know that he has fallen from heaven. We know that. Uh, we suppose that he's some sort of uh, angel, fallen angel, some sort of being that God had created that has fallen from heaven. Luke 10, 18, Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Okay, so Satan is, he is some being that has some powers afforded to him, okay, just by the creation of his very being. We also know, according to 2 Corinthians 4, 4, that Satan is the god of this world. You see, when sin entered the world, and Eve and Adam decided to eat the fruit and decided to disobey God. You see, God brought about a redemption plan, but the redemption plan was for his people. It was not for this world that he had created. So this world was then given over to Satan, and he is now the God of this very world that we live in. This flesh and blood around us, God, or Satan is the God of this world. 1 John 5.19 says, and Satan is in control of this world. How about that? He's in control. But you know what? Satan might be in control, but it is so much more important that we realize who we are. Because John 15, 19 says, we are not of this world. Amen, right? So that means we are fighting this battle but Satan does not have control over us. You see, God did not leave us here helpless and defenseless. No, he left us here protected under his authority. And we don't belong to Satan. This world belongs to Satan, but we do not belong to Satan. Although we act like it sometimes, we feel like we're in his mercy, but we are not. Ephesians 6.11 says, we are soldiers. We are children of God, and we are soldiers in his army. In Luke 10, 19, this is so powerful. Jesus says he has given us authority over the power of the enemy. You see, it's a time we remember who we are. It's time we remember who we are in Christ. And I'm going to share, I've shared here before that I like to journal. And I know I have some other journaling friends out there. Um, when God speaks something to me, I like to write it down because, you know what, I like to go back to it and read it again. And from time to time, God speaks to me through the same thing. He says, remember this? I feel like he did that with Israelites. He does that with me in my journal. <laughs> but, you know, I was going through a difficult time in my life where I, I was frustrated, to be honest with you. I was frustrated, frustrated physically with um, some of the things that I was suffering. And I felt like I was, well, not really capable. I felt like I was... 
less than good enough, um, that I wasn't strong enough. I didn't see myself as somebody who could fight the battle that was in front of me. And uh, so I wrote this down because this was my experience that I had with God. You see, God, he loves his people, so he comes to us and he came to me. And this is what he said. And I wrote down what he did. He showed me a picture of a trembling lion. This is how I wrote it. Lord, you showed me a picture of a trembling lion. You told me that the lion is me. What a pitiful sight, I thought. You must be so disappointed in me. And you said, no. I want you to see what I made you. I made you a lion. I have given you authority over this jungle in your life, and I have equipped you with sharp claws and teeth. And you have a reason to roar that will tell all others what and whose you are. I want you to roar again. You are a lion. There is nothing to make you tremble when I am on your side. So stand tall. Lift your head high. Stop licking your wounds. You are my lion. Look at your claws and sharpen them. Open your mouth wide. Remember your teeth and find your roar and let it out. Let it echo and resonate throughout your jungle. Become all that I have made you. You are a lion. And you know what? It's time we remember who we are in Christ. Because just like I was that trembling lion, I am a lion and you are a lion and you are a child of God and he has given us everything we need to get through this battle. But how does this battle work? You see, Satan's primary attack is temptation. He comes to tempt us, to destroy us, and he is, he's the terrorist to our soul. This battle is over our very souls. That's what we're battling. And I want to look at the temptations of Eve and the temptation of Jesus. And there's a lot of correlation between the two. And, I, and when I look at them, I can see that Satan tempts us in three ways. The first is something we're all very familiar with. It's the very physical needs in our lives, right? You see, Satan came to Eve and he said, look at this fruit, you know? And the Bible says that Eve looked at it and said, and saw that it was good for eating, basically. She desired it. She looked at it, she desired it. You see, Satan gave her, showed her something that was desirable for her physical being. If we go to Luke, and this is where we are in turn, Luke chapter, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 4. Sorry, I wrote down a few of them here. Matthew chapter 4, where uh, Jesus is fasted for 40 days in the desert, and Satan comes to him to tempt him. And we're going to look here at the first. He comes to Jesus the same way. So he came to Eve, showing her something that's desirable. She desired it. She could, I, could, I could almost see that Eve's, you know, belly started to rumble looking at it. You know what I mean? Oh, that is good, isn't it? That does look good, doesn't it? You know, like when piece of chocolate cake? <laughs> when you look at it? Okay, so 40 days. Jesus has not had a drop of food for 40 days. And we are going to start with chapter, or verse 2. So Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him. So Jesus has a real physical need in his body. The tempter comes to him and says, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Let me say right here that Jesus denied himself physically. That's what he did. You see, Satan will come, and he will try to provide for us in this way, and we give in to it. You know, this temptation, it's the, um, it's the alcohol, it's the drugs, it's sexual temptations, it's temptation to, to lie to get yourself out of trouble, it's the temptation to cheat the government or whatever, it's the temptation to steal, it's the temptation to do something 
at a real physical level. And we're all pretty familiar with that. And sometimes we, you know, we're pretty good, you know, we clean ourselves up and we, you know, maybe don't have too many messy things in our physical life. But let me tell you, there's another way that Satan comes to tempt us. The first is physical, and the second is in our minds, in our thoughts, and he tempts us to doubt, to worry, and to mistrust. And if we look at Eve, what he does is he comes to Eve and he says, Did God really tell you not to eat from the trees in the garden? <laughs> right? So he enters, he enters a question into her mind, and he makes her think about that. Is that really what God said? I don't know. Maybe, no, no, I know God said. No, God said that I can eat from any tree except for that one in the center of the garden that's the knowledge of good and evil. I'm not supposed to eat from that. And then he does this really interesting thing. She says, and I must not even touch it or I'll die, which is not what God said. He didn't say anything about touching it. He said, you're not to eat it. And what I see here is Eve is entertaining the enemy. He's, she's entertaining the thoughts that he's interjecting into her mind. Oh, boy, do we do that, don't we? You know, because Satan, he's, he's going to come and he's going to tempt us to think, oh, I can't do it. I can't be forgiven. I've messed up too much. I'm not good enough. It's going to tempt you to be afraid, to feel alone. Tempt you that you can't even go on. He's going to tempt you to believe that things will never get better and that things will never change. See, that's how Satan likes to get into our minds. You see, he interjects thoughts. And when we entertain those thoughts, that's when we get ourselves into trouble, just like Eve did. You see, Jesus, I love Jesus, and I love the way, you know, up until this point, Jesus, Satan tempts Jesus, Jesus, he speaks the word to him, right? Okay? So let's go to verse 5, Matthew 4, verse 5. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, right? He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. So Satan's coming, and he's speaking the word back to him, but in his nice little twisted way. He's trying to make it sound like, okay, so... Jesus, if you're the Son of God, I mean, you just throw yourself down from here, you'll be fine. And if you don't throw yourself down from here, well, then you must think you're the Son of God. Right? See how Satan gets in there and he twists things around? You see, Satan, he's speaking, he's speaking the word to him. Oh, but Jesus doesn't fall for that. Not at all. You see, Jesus doesn't have to prove anything to Satan, and neither do you, and neither do I. Because Jesus says, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to test. I'm not going to do anything you bait in front of me saying, I love Jesus, because he does not fall for that. But that happens to us in our lives when we entertain. We have to be so careful because the thoughts will come in your mind. I mean, it happens to me all the time. You have to battle. It'll be like, I can't do that. You know, I'm going to get sicker and sicker and sicker. Those thoughts, they come. My finances are never going to get better. This situation in my family, it's just the way it is. It's just the, it was in the cards that way. It's how it is. There's not going to change. Right? You see, that is the voice of Satan speaking to you. And when we, you see, Jesus didn't argue with him. No. He didn't say, no, I don't need to. Well, I think I am the Son of God and I don't really care what you say. He didn't argue with him. Yeah, right? He didn't say, yeah, I'm the son of God, you know, because, you know, I can do all these miracles. And so, you know, he didn't argue with him. He just spoke the truth back to him. And that's what we need to do in our lives. So when Satan comes in and he says, you have something to be afraid of, or you can be afraid because you just don't know what your future holds, you can be like, God has not given me a spirit of fear. Right? The third way, so the first is in a physical temptation, in a real physical being. We're all familiar with that. The second is our minds. See, we need to recognize these attacks of the enemy because we need to battle them. And when we recognize them, we can battle them and we can win them. The third way that Satan comes 
is through idolatry and self-glorification. And you see, we see this in Eve. You see, um, first of all, I think Eve fell into every temptation. She, she did. She looked at the fruit. She doubted God, wanted what was best for her. And then she doubted, actually, she just very doubted what God said, you know? She didn't rely on what she knew. She allowed Satan to keep speaking to her when she entertained his thoughts. But then Satan comes to Eve and says, no, that's not what will happen. You're not going to die. You're going to become like God. And he knows that. Right? That's idolatry and self-glorification. You know, when we think we can get through this life without God, that's idolatry and self-glorification. You know, we lift ourselves up above God when we think that we need to take matters into our own hands that we need to lean, uh, lean on our own knowledge and our own understanding. And we go through that every moment you live, we live, every moment I live, and I don't recognize that my breath has been ordained by God, then that's idolatry and self-glorification. It is. If I think I deserve this breath, I have it, I earned it, because I exercise <laughs> or whatever. You know, that's idolatry and self-glorification. But let's look at Jesus. Let's look at what Satan does to Jesus. Uh, verse 8. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Now, this is the verse where you know this world belongs to Satan. Because Jesus doesn't argue with them. He says, All this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. And then Jesus Oh, Jesus says, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus was all about the plan of the Father. He did not want this world. He did not want the kingdoms. He didn't want the splendor. He did not want the glory. He wanted God's people. That he wanted you and he wanted me. And that is the reason why he came. See, this world doesn't mean anything to God. But you and me... We mean everything to God. Everything. Now when I look at these three sam these uh, two examples of temptation, I want to say first of all, we don't talk about this very much, but I want you to know that it is not strange if you hear the voice of Satan. Alright? I'm just gonna lay it right out there like that. But this is why. Eve heard Satan, right? Well, let me tell you, if Jesus is not impervious to the voice of Satan, you're not either, and I'm not, okay? <laughs> so, Jesus heard the voice of Satan. So I want you to know that you have to question everything that comes into your mind, into your thoughts, everything that you think. Is it Satan or is it God? Because Satan has a way of twisting things around. We already saw he uses scripture, even, and twist it around. So we need to first of all realize it's not abnormal to hear the voice of Satan. You know what? I think sometimes we hear Satan better than we hear God. Do you know why? Because really, we're full of sin, okay? <laughs> you know? And we kind of need to clean up a little bit so we can start to hear some more of God. And when we clean up a little bit more, we can hear a little more of God, right? Um, but in reality, it's so much easier to hear the voice of Satan than it is to hear the voice of God. And he's all around us. We know this world is his. He's in control of it. It doesn't take much for him to send somebody to say something to you, right? Or to show something to you. Oh, no. It's a battle for your soul. He wants your soul. We need to take captive every thought. Every thought needs to be taken captive. When we listen to his lies, they become a stronghold. When he tempts you to think, I can't, you say, I can do all things through Christ. When he tempts you to think you're not good enough, you say, his grace is sufficient for me. You see, we speak the truth to him. When he says you're alone, you say, Jesus says he will never leave me nor forsake me. And we already said when he tempts you to fear, you say, God has not given me what? But? Thank you. <laughs> Amen. That's right. We need to speak the truth. So when Satan speaks to us, first of all, you're going to hear him. And when he speaks to you, you need to speak truth back to him. And the second thing I see from it, not only will we hear the voice of Satan, but we need to use our words to fight Satan. There is power in our words. We talk about negative power <laughs> when we say things that are bad. 
But let me tell you about power when we say things that are true. Okay? Don't worry. I mean, yeah, we don't want to say negative things, but we need to say more true things in our lives. You see, Jesus, you know, it didn't say, Satan said this to him and Jesus thought. He didn't say that, did it? <laughs> Jesus said this to, or Satan said this to Jesus, and Jesus, well, he sat there contemplating for a while, and he thought, then he just signed them. No, he didn't. He used his words. He spoke to Satan. You know why? Satan is not a mind reader. He is not omniscient. That is not one of the powers he has. So when you say things, you better bet he's listening one way or the other. Whether it's good things or bad things, he's listening. And when you voice your fears, he hears your fears. And then he goes about battling you in your mind by telling you things. But we need to command Satan. When we speak to Satan, I want to caution you here to be very careful because Satan is a force to be reckoned with. You need to suit up. You need to armor up, okay? We need to be prepared when we face Satan and when we speak to him. And when we speak to him, you do it in two ways. The first way we speak to Satan is we speak the word of God to him. We speak the truth to him. And the second way we speak to Satan is to command him. We have authority over his power on this earth. Because we are not of this world, right? So we have authority to command Satan. And I want you to take up that authority tonight. I want you to remember who you are. You see, God has not made you to be a trembling lion. He has given you everything that you need. And your words have authority in the name of Jesus. And you can command Satan to get out of the situations, to get out of your mind. <laughs> There's this military strategy. Think me like a weird geek, but I like military strategy. <laughs> I do. I think it's very interesting, it's very fascinating. Um, but there's this military strategy called scorched earth. And I love this because this is how we should be living our lives. It's the strategy of destroying anything that might be of use to the enemy while advancing. I'm going to say it again. It's the strategy of destroying anything that might be of use to the enemy while advancing. And this is what we need to do in our lives. We need to destroy the strongholds. You see, our sin is strength to the enemy. Our thoughts of doubt and fear are strength to the enemy. And when we rely on ourselves, that is strength to our enemy. And those are all strongholds in our lives, and we need to get them out. We need to prepare ourselves. We need to battle. You see, if you're not battling, you're just losing. You see, God didn't leave us here as prisoners of war. We're not prisoners of war. No, we are the victors in this battle. And we need to pray. We need to remove the sin from our lives. We need to read the word so we know the truth, so we can speak the truth. And we need to exercise our authority to command Satan to get out of our lives and our family's lives. You see, here's the deal. This war is already won. Okay? You read through Revelations. This war is won. You see, Satan, he might be in charge of this world, but God is in charge of hell. And he has prepared that place. And he doesn't want you or I or any of us to be in there, but he has prepared it for Satan and for his followers, and they will be thrown into hell. And this war will be over, and God will win. But here's the question. How are you going out? <laughs> you know? Are we going out with some, missing some arms and legs? You see, because we don't have to live our lives overtaken by the enemy. It doesn't really matter how you battle your life. It doesn't matter how you battle because this war is over. It only matters to you. And it matters to God's ability to use you. So are you tired of Satan doing these things in your life? Can you see him working? I talk about moms being good battlers. You know what? Because nobody wants, we don't want God messing with our children. And you know what? Maybe some of you guys here tonight, you 
have some children that don't know the Lord, you have some family members that you love, let me tell you, we got to battle on the spiritual front. We have to battle. We have to pick up our swords. We have to command Satan to get out of their lives. You see, because we are soldiers in God's army. And this is why we are here, is to battle. The only reason why God has not come back yet is because he wants more people to come to him. And you know what? He needs his people now to start picking up their arms and beginning to battle. We don't need to live this life in chains. We need to take our authority that we have in Christ and we need to tell Satan to get out of our lives, out of our children's lives, get out of my head, get out of my health, get out of my finances, get out of my job. You have no authority because I belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what we need to be doing. I'm going to speak some truth here. I'm just going to read some scripture because we need to hear this. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, our weapons have divine authority to demolish strongholds, demolish arguments, and every contention that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. 1 John 5, 4 through 5. For everyone who is born of God overcomes the world. Hallelujah. And this victory that overcomes the world is our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? The one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. In Matthew 18, 18 through 20. I tell you the truth. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And again, I tell you that if two on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Yeah, the enemy should fear us when we come together. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. You see, this is your call to arms. Let me tell you, we know we're in a battle. Are you going to pick up your arms and fight? Amen. Are you going to be like I was? Are you going to lick your wounds and look at me and, oh, how sorrowful I am? You know what? Look, you know, I battle with these chronic, Ill chronic illnesses of mine, and every day I battle every single day. But I am not going to give in to the enemy, and I am not going to give in to his lies, and I am not going to allow him to manipulate me to think anything that is not true because you know what? In Christ, I can do all things, right? That's right. This is God's message for us today. Remember who you are. You are not a prisoner of war in this world. You are not. God has not left you alone. He has not abandoned you. He has not designed for you to live a life that is afflicted constantly by the enemy. You are not a loser in Christ. You are not. You are a winner in Christ. And I want to encourage you today. You see, today, we're going to advance in the kingdom of God. We're going to advance. You see, we need to take down some of these strongholds. We need to get some sin out of our lives. If God is speaking you to, to you today, and you know that you have something in your life that you should not have in your life, then take it down, because Satan does not have control over you. He cannot make you do it. You have to tell him to get out. And if you've been battling in your mind, if you've been struggling, if you've been thinking that things are never going to get better, I'm never going to get healed, I'm never going to be able to accomplish this, I'm never going to get any further in my life, I'm never going to have those things that I'd like to have, then I want you to know that those are lies, that God has truth for you, and the truth is, you can 
have everything in Christ, all that you need. And we need to tell Satan to get out of our heads and we don't entertain his lies. As soon as they come in, we cast them out. Amen. Amen. So here's my question. Are you ready to take arms? Are you ready to take arms? Amen. Do you want to fight this battle? Yes. Amen. All right, because let me tell you, you, if you know Christ, you've won already. But do you want to keep living this way, or do you want to live a better way? Do you want to live victoriously in Christ? Amen. Do you want to get out of this life with everything? Give it all to God? Do you want to be effective? You know, you can be laying on your back, and God can use you. You can still be a strong warrior for Christ. God will always use you if you're willing to pick up your arms. And that's his message tonight. And you know what? This is what I want to do. I'm not going to let you close your eyes and raise your hand. If you want to be in this battle, if you're ready to take arms, then stand up. Because that's what it's all about. Stand up. Tell Christ, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fight this battle. And I want you to begin to speak right now truth in your life. There are circumstances that are bothering you, things that you've been coming to God over and over and over again, and he just wants you to pick up your arms and fight this battle. He wants you, he's already given you everything that you need to win, but you just haven't picked up your sword yet. You haven't stabbed the enemy in the heart with truth, which is that I am a winner in Christ. You are a winner in Christ. And so I just want you to do that right now. I just want you to lift your hands and just tell God that you're not going, tell Satan that you are not going to let him in. Get out of this place. Get out of my family's life. Get out of my children's life. I am not giving over one single love, one family member that I love and not going to you, Satan. You are not allowed in. I am fighting. I am fighting for my loved ones, for those that I care about. I am not going to give into this sin anymore. I am not going to do it. Saying you have no control over me. But Jesus, I give all that I have to you. And God, help me to remember every moment of every day that it is you that keeps me going. That it is you that makes me march forward. It is you that I live for. It is you, Lord. You and only you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Just tell right now. Just tell right now. I want you to speak the names of your loved ones. I have a brother who has not come to Christ yet. I'm speaking his name. Eric, I'm calling it out right now. Satan, you have no authority in his life. I'm going to battle as a child of God. I'm not going to just roll over and let you take him to hell. No, I am not. I am going to speak the truth into his life. I am going to fight for him. And I'm going to hold to the last breath. He does not belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. I want those right now that are battling physically right now. Let me tell you, I know how that is. I know how that is. Let me tell you right now, if your body doesn't feel healed, it is healed. It is already healed. It's just a matter of the revealing. It's a matter of the revealing. You see, Jesus said, blessed are those who believe who have not seen. Okay, I have not seen this healing in my body, but I believe that my healing is in my body. And so right now I want you to speak. I'm going to speak that I have healing in my body. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what the devil tells me. It doesn't matter what my glucometer says or my blood sugar. It doesn't matter what drugs I take. It doesn't matter. I am healed in the name of Jesus Christ and that is all that matters. And I just feel right now that we should talk about depression. We need to talk about depression. Let me tell you, depression is, is us forgetting who we are in Christ. Oh, and boy, Satan, he likes to blind us with those lies. And if you are suffering depression, if you are feeling like you cannot get through this life, if you are feeling that you are less 
than adequate enough. Jesus is telling you, you are more than enough in me. I am sufficient for everything. And no matter what you fear, no matter what thoughts go into your mind, no matter what they are, I am there with you. And I am going to lift you up. I am going to take you through. And we are going to get through this together. Sorry, I'm just so passionate about this. I know that oh, I know that Jesus, I know that God is saying this is the time to pick up your arms and fight. We can't be lazy soldiers in the armor in the army of God. We can't be that way. Jesus needs us to fight. He needs us to take those tools that he has already given us. And he needs us to pick them up because you know why? It's because he loves you. But you know what? There are others that he loves in this world. And you are the only one who's ever going to be able to reach them and touch them. And if you don't pick up your sword, if you don't pick up your shield, if you don't pick up your prayer life, if you don't begin to cry out for God, he's not going to be able to get to those people. And he needs us to be soldiers of the Lord. Soldiers that are willing to fight and battle just like he loves those people. He wants us to cry out. He wants us to get on our knees. He wants us to beg with the heart of the Father for these people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, take your soldiers today. We're standing because... Not because we're great in our own, but because we're great in you, Lord. Because we're going to take steps. We're going to scorch this territory, and we're not going to allow the enemy to use anything that he can to try to advance in our kingdom. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray for you as you go here, and I want you to know that I know some people might be battling in their families. And it says where two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst of them. Let me tell you, the enemy fears us when we gather together. And if you need prayer, I want you to come up here. And Pastor Dave and myself and any other prayer warriors that want to come up here and join together. Because, you know, we have hurting people in this church. And we need to be praying for them. We need to be battling with them. We need to link arms. You know, no soldier left behind. That's right. No Christian left behind. Uh-uh. I am not going to let the enemy take you down. I'm not going to let the enemy tell you those lies. I am not going to let the enemy have his way in your life. No, no. <laughs> I'm going to battle for you. I'm going to battle for you. I'm going to battle for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord. I thank you so much that you can find use in people like us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just give ourselves to you tonight. Lord, I would just pray that you would be with everyone in this place. That, Father, you would take them through the battle this week, Lord Jesus. That, Father, you would make them acutely aware of where Satan is trying to get in and to destroy and to steal from their lives. And, Lord, I pray that you would give them boldness to speak out of their mouths, not to speak in their minds. Oh, I don't want to hear that. No, I want them to say, no, Satan, get out. Satan, get out of this place. Satan, those are lies. I'm not listening to your lies. Give them boldness and strength to do that, Lord Jesus. Father, we love you. Yes. I praise you, Father. I praise you, Lord. Help us get up and fight every day for you, Lord. For your kingdom. For your people that you love. In Jesus' name.